Hi, my name is Dr. Britzi Arce. I am a pediatric dentist. I also do aesthetic dentistry and periodontics. Dentist for the gums. So I have a few I have a few questions here. At age um, like as early as like three or four months, you should start cleaning the tongue and the gum area. Because when the child is starting to teeth, they feel that their gums are a little itchy. And also when the child drinks milk, because at this age, milk is their main source of food. So um, there's like a lot of milk getting stuck in the tongue. So this also causes like bacteria. So um, some parents use a uh, finger brush or a washcloth or a gauze. You can use that. But for me personally, I use a teeth, teething brush. Like it's like a teether with bristles. The brand is Richel. So um, it comes in um, three sizes. So there's one for four months, nine months, and one year old. So when my baby was four months, I used the teething toothbrush and I just put a non-fluoride tooth gel to clean her gums and her tongue. When she was nine months old, I started using the Richel bristle toothbrush. So I also put a toothbrush and I brushed her teeth and gums with it. And then when she turned one year old, I started using the small bristle toothbrush and I already used a fluoride toothpaste on her. So ideally at least twice a day, morning and evening. So it depends on the age, so use a proper toothbrush, age appropriate toothbrush and toothpaste. So this will depend on the child's age. So when the child is still very small, you can't expect them to brush their own teeth. You will be the one to brush their teeth. It also depends if the child is cooperative or like they cry a lot while brushing. So if the child is, is good, you can just brush the teeth and then you can also teach the child how to brush. So you just brush them after because you cannot expect that they can brush on their own thoroughly. And if the child is crying, so you can do a knee-to-knee -knee position. So the, the mother or whoever's brushing the teeth and one companion can be facing each other with the child's head on the lap of the mother and the legs um, wrapped around the waist of the companion. Then she can brush the teeth of the child even while crying. But if she's alone, she can use her, she can just maybe use her legs to wrap around the legs of the child so the child will not move. So ideally, dental cleaning is advised every six months. So that's the minimum. But so in this uh, appointment, we do cleaning and fluoride. But if the, the parents are having a hard time to brush the teeth, Sometimes we advise uh, like more frequent appointments like every three or four months. The recommended age is at one year old. But sometimes the parents are having a hard time to brush the teeth that they want to bring the child at an earlier age. That's also acceptable. So this will be a good start when the tooth erupts. Starts to erupt, then you can bring the child to the dentist so that they can teach you how to properly brush the teeth. We just let the, nut, the milk teeth to fall off on its own. We don't need to extract it unless indicated. So it's indicated to be extracted if the permanent tooth is already coming out and the milk teeth are still there. Also, if there's severe um, cavities that is beyond restoration, so we also extract this. But if the permanent tooth is not yet going to come out, we need to put a space maintainer to maintain the space so that the milk, the permanent teeth can come out on the spot. Because if not, then the, the other teeth will move and then the, the, there will be no space for the permanent tooth to come out. So milk itself doesn't cause cavities. What causes cavities is if you leave the milk inside the mouth. Like example, um, at night, if you leave the bottle and the child falls asleep, the child can get cavities because the milk has a sugar content and lactic acid. So if you leave the bottle in the mouth and the child is already sleeping, there's no salivary flow. This is, so this is the one that can cause cavities in the teeth because the acid can, can go inside the teeth and cause the cavities. 
So how to prevent it? Don't leave the bottle at night and let the child drink milk and then water after that. Or you can make the milk um, with more water so it's not very, um, very sweet. And if the child is breastfeeding, you can also let them drink water after or brush the teeth after or at least wipe it with a gauze with the toothpaste. With this case, it can be genetic because, uh, example, the parents have a good set of teeth. So they know how to properly take care of the teeth of their child. So the child will also have good teeth. And then for some people, if they have bad teeth, they don't know how to properly take care of the teeth. So sometimes their kids also have bad teeth. But it's also possible that even if the parents have good set of teeth, the child can have a bad set of teeth because the child is an individual person. So it depends on the habits, the diet, and the hygiene. So on the other way, on the other hand, if the parents have bad teeth, the child can have good set of teeth if the teeth are properly taken care of. This usually is caused by the tooth size and the size of the arch, like the jaw, the jaw size. So sometimes there's a big teeth, small teeth, big jaw, small jaw. So that causes the tooth eruption to be in a different way, like overbite or underbite. So in this case, there's nothing that we can do to prevent it. But then we can do inter we can fix it afterwards, like when the teeth are all permanent with the dental braces. So ideally, braces are applied on children when all their teeth are permanent. So this is around 12 to 13 years old. But there are some cases that they put braces as early as 9 years old because they need to create space for the permanent teeth to come out. The first um, dental procedure that we do is the oral prophylaxis with fluoride. So that's just a regular dental cleaning with fluoride. So if there's any treatment that is needed to be done, like fillings or strip of crowns or root canal for children, popotomy or if they need extraction. So that's, we do that after, if indicated. If not, just regular cleaning and fluoride. So this is for, for all the kids. So starting at like months or like age one until they grow up. So we apply the cleaning. We do the cleaning with fluoride. These are called neonatal teeth. So when the child has neonatal teeth, it's uh, advised to be removed. Because these are not the baby teeth that is gonna come out. It's not the, the original set of teeth. So when they remove this, the, the baby teeth are still gonna come out. So usually the cause is unknown. Like maybe there's um, an excess in the, in the tooth buds when the tooth was being formed. So it has to be removed because it can cause problems like in the in the jaw or in the tooth that's gonna come out. So it's advised to be extracted and just wait for the for, for the baby teeth to come out. Actually, there's no way to prevent this to happen because it will depend on the size of the teeth and the size of the jaw and the arch. So that's nothing that we can we can have control of. But some factors can be done to prevent, like bottle prolonged bottle feeding, so that causes um, like malocclusion or open bite. Also, thumb sucking, and also like habits like nail biting or biting a pencil. So there are different factors that can cause um, malocclusion. So that's all that we can do is to prevent all those habits. If a patient complains of a toothache, we don't give a, like a first aid right away. We ask the patient to come to the clinic because we want to know what's the cause. Because if the patient has a toothache, sometimes they don't know if it's coming from the teeth or from the gums. And is it because there's a decay in the tooth or if there's a plaque or whatever. So we don't give um, medicines or those uh, products right away. But if the patient cannot control the pain anymore, then it's up to them if they want to drink uh, a medicine. So the tooth, as much as possible, we don't want to extract teeth. 
we only extract teeth if it is indicated, if it's beyond restoration, or if the patient insists that they want to have it extracted. But then we normally ask them to write a waiver that they are the one who insisted. So we do everything we can to save teeth, like doing a root canal, doing a filling or a crown or a bridge or a crown lengthening surgery. We do everything we can to save the teeth because natural teeth are, are still a lot better than having dentures.